Buenos Tardes. This is Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele report. And this one is in the afternoon of Wednesday, February 25th of 2015. We got a lot of different energy going on around here these days. The sun is conjunct Neptune today. Poseidon, the god of the waters. I am here at my friend Fateh's place called the Waterfall Villas. And it's just outside of Dominical, Costa Rica. Might be a place you'd like to check out sometime. I'll put the link down below in the notes because this is an amazing place as you will soon see. I'm going down this trail a little bit. I hope I can keep the camera still while I tell you a little bit about the astrological aspects that are going on. Because it's not only the Sun conjunct Neptune, but the Moon is in Gemini. And just this afternoon, squares the Sun. Moon square Sun, square Neptune. And then by Friday, she moves into the sign of Cancer. Yeah? Where she comes into an opposition with Pluto, squares Uranus. You'll know from last week's report that Venus and Mars have been conjunct in the sign of Aries. And she's going to come into a square, yes, on Friday with that Venus-Mars conjunction. And this is the key point. She squares the Venus and Mars and trines the Sun Neptune. And this is what's going on with everything. Yeah. By Sunday, she moves into Leo. And this is the truly amazing part. As she comes into this beautiful grand trine with Venus and Mars and Uranus and Aries. Saturn up there in Sagittarius and then she joins together to conjoin with Jupiter So like Sunday and Monday is absolutely amazing time Yeah, where we have this whole grand trine going on. So it's kind of a crazy You know few aspects coming up and then it's going to really You know like the roller coaster is going to take off <laughs> Yeah next week so <clears throat> I just really want to just you know bring the camera around slowly to give you the full effect oh my goodness I don't know if I can get the whole thing uh, in one shot but you can see why they are called the waterfall villas <laughs> Yeah, baby. Okay. Well, here's a spot. And if you get tired of listening, you can just listen to the waterfall and watch the waterfall and forget all the astrology. <laughs> Which is exactly what the sun conjunct Neptune in the sign of Pisces wants to do. Neptune and Pisces have to do with infinite peace, serenity. Pisces in the 12th house has to do with places like this, retreats, getaways, ashrams, monasteries, places of seclusion and meditation where you can dream away in stillness, in silence, let go of all the activity, let go of the ego, let go of the attachments, and experience nirvana, bliss. It's the realm of art, music, color, dance, dreams, meditation, everything that takes us out of this world, out of our cares and concerns, out of our busyness 
even out of our relationships. So this is a wonderful time when the sun is conjunct Neptune to disappear, <laughs> to go on vacation, to take off, to say goodbye to the mundane commitments, needs, and desires, and move into a place of egolessness, move into a place of peace, move into a place of emptiness in a way. Now the tricky part about that is that we have this Mars, Venus coming up to conjoin the south node of the moon in the fiery sign of Aries, trining this Jupiter in Leo, which is like ready to take on the world do it all, see it all, have it all, dance the time away. It's quite an amazing combination. And so when the moon comes around, certainly, you know, it, it squares that Venus Mars, creating this tension, maybe a little anxiousness, maybe a little spontaneous combustion like I want to bust out and break out. And the other aspect that we want to really note with Pisces is that it is the wild. So when I look at all the combinations, I'm in the right place. <laughs> I'm at the Envision Music Festival in Costa Rica. <laughs> I mean, this is a time they could not have planned this Envision Festival any better with the astrological influences that are going on right now because this is a week of madness. This is a week of chaos. This is a week of reaching out to the far distant realms of space and drawing in and imagining and fantasizing and dreaming a new Aries a new paradigm, a new reality with new solutions and new ideas and inventive ways of being. This is an extremely intense, powerful time leading up to this whole month of March. We have the final culmination of the Uranus square Pluto going on through this whole time period, the last two and a half years. We've got, we're coming into the eclipse, the solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Pisces, the lunar eclipse happening right in the middle of Aries and Libra. This is a really intense time, and I talked about it last week, like the gun was going off and the horses were shooting out of the gate. And this is just like this first kind of charge, kind of impulse. We're just rounding the first bend. And we're kind of getting used to like moving and, and, and an, a, a kind of an order, a kind of an order is beginning to shape. Some are pulling ahead, some are falling behind. There's that initial burst. And in that initial burst, all that I can say is thank God for Saturn. Saturn is holding this mess down. It's giving some stability coming in from Sagittarius, trining Uranus, trining Jupiter, and that trine gives a sense of stability to something that otherwise could just blow up in our faces. And so this is a time that I've got to say, it's important it's an important time, the start of the race, you know, it says a lot. And that initial order that we're all jogging for, you know, says a lot. The choices, the decisions, what impulse to follow, what desire to control. This is a time when it's very easy to lose control, to want to lose control to absolutely let go. 
and let the animal instincts, let the lower chakras, let the impulses, let the desires just absolutely run the show like a bull in a china shop. This is a time when a lot of damage can be done. <laughs> you know, the bull breaks all the china. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man, the ram. This is a time to be very aware, to be on it, to be alert, to be awakened, to really use your observer, to use your witness so that you don't get lost in the upsurge, in the, in the, in the volcanic rising of the Kundalini and just like, you know, you know, like the rocket just like, if it doesn't take off, it blows up. Yeah? This is a time of like, all I can say is I really like to use the prime directive. Keep your focus, your intention on your prime directive. And then you will take all that energy and you will harness all of that desire and all of that passion and all of that animal instinct and you will manage it like a wizened elder, like Saturn and Sagittarius, the teacher, the guru, and really harness, tame the dragon. Do not try to kill the dragon. Do not try to, you know, well, <laughs> don't let the dragon devour you. <laughs> it's like finding this middle point during this time. Not getting lost in the illusions of what's going on out here and all the busyness and changing the people and changing the world and changing the, you know, the outside world. But remember that sun in Pisces is clean up your own backyard, clean up your own magnetic field, yeah? Clean up your own heart space, and it will radiate out naturally at this time into great manifestations. This is an amazing year, 2015. This is like the year so many of us have been waiting for when so many of our dreams are gonna manifest and so many of our problems are gonna move behind us. But really, in order to make that straight way forward, we have to be in our core center truth. Not get, not get too low pulled into the underworld of desire and impulse and not take too many drugs or, you know, medicine or whatever and get too lost in the etheric reality. But to see that we are, as human beings, the link between the upper and the lower worlds, the sky and the earth. We are the heart chakra, the fourth chakra, the middle chakra. This is the link. We are the link that connects these worlds and we have to hold Rudolf Steiner did an amazing you know sculpture of the man with Lucifer and Araman yeah and it's this this man holding the upper and the lower worlds in balance this is the task of the human being <laughs> this is what we came in to this third dimension to experience is our co-creative capacity to unite these worlds and not be controlled or dominated or get lost in either one of them. Ow! You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can get too high and you can get too low. So you gotta really, this is boom, get in your core. So, the mantra, the start of a new paradigm begins within my heart. 
the more I learn to give and receive, the sooner others will start. Get into this place of the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine, the giving and receiving, the above and below, the light and the dark. Stay in that heart center, stay in that core, and as you are there, then your magnetic field is energized, you are charged, and you heal the world around you, and the world comes to you to be healed, and it happens. And before you know it, we wake up, and it is a new paradigm. It's not about forcing our philosophy or our beliefs on other people. It's about being the new paradigm. And as examples, inspiring the world to follow in those footsteps because it is so freaking awesome. <laughs> You got to love this stuff, man. <laughs> you got it. The start of a new paradigm begins within my heart. The more I learn to give and receive, the sooner others will start. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.